and welcome to another special episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. Um, my name is Jule and I'm the natural dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio where I naturally dye a non-superwash and plastic-free yarns and every now and then also produce my own limited editions of local wool. Um, this episode is meant to be a little bit of a special treat um, for the Christmas uh, season and um, after I've received quite a couple of uh, questions about um, yarn production and everything I thought to maybe sit down and chat you through um, my process of making our limited edition yarns. Um, also, I feel we've had quite a few new uh, people following me around the different places I'm on, like on Instagram and here, so I don't know whether you're aware of everything um, I'm doing here and what Wool and Twine Fiber Studio is, apart from the natural dyeing part. And since this these limited edition yarns and local production is so dear to my heart, I thought I would maybe share a little bit more of the process here so you can maybe um, have a little insight of how these things come to life. Um, so this episode will mostly be me chatting about how the yarn production works for the limited editions um, and I will also chat you through my holiday knitting plans um, that I'm not re I, I haven't really prepared many plans but I have some rough ideas on what I want to work on and maybe one or two of you might have a couple of recommendations pattern wise or I don't know would want to join me maybe on some of the projects and have a little knit along or whatever um, like a festive cast on or something that we could have together um, so yeah, this will be mostly a chatty episode, um, like a little bit um, of an extra to the regular podcast episodes that I usually record. And so um, I should maybe mention what I'm wearing. Um, this is my Odette uh, sweater by Sari Nordlund that I just recently finished and I'm sharing more about this in um, my last podcast episode um, that I'm going to link here. And it's just a very like a very simple sweater that I like to layer over dresses and yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it and it's also very lovely to wear. Um, so yeah, the occasion of this little video is also maybe that I might be releasing a new limited edition yarn um, in the January shop update. Um, that one is still um, not announced but I will uh, do that before the Christmas holiday for sure so I will let you know when the update is going to be. Um, maybe this video even goes up after I announced it I'm not sure but um, yeah sign up for the newsletter or maybe follow me on Instagram and as soon as I know when the update is going to be I'm making sure that I will share it um, both on Instagram and uh, on the newsletter. Um, so yeah, local yarn production. Um, it started uh, when I was realizing that there are very few um, truly local yarns um, to me, like truly local to me yarns here. And um, I also chatted to a couple of shepherds and shepherdesses who told me about the issues of selling wool nowadays and how it has changed in the last um, decades and so I just really thought I had to change something about this because um, what they told me is apparently that wool has such a low value like monetary value nowadays that they um, kind of it's most of the time not even worth the effort of having a shearer that takes care of the wool and everything um, to sell it, so lots of wool nowadays that's local to me gets burned um, 
and that's actually or thrown away and that's actually a pity because yeah there's so much potential in that wool I mean um, we all know about the great properties of 100% um, wool yarns like they keep you warm they can also still keep you kind of cool when you're in the warmth because they're regulating the temperature it can repel dirt and smells it can um, take up moisture to up to I think quite a lot of a high percentage of its own weight and it's isolating and natural wool has so many properties and it's such a shame that there is a lot of it going to waste and so um, in the early days I was I, I knew that I'm not going to be able to save tons of wool uh, from being thrown away but I wanted to contribute to um, local production and maybe build a network of shepherds that I could help out with the whole wool distribution thing and yeah that I could take the burden of the yearly shearing off um, because yeah for many shepherds it's actually a burden um, also because many of them they spend a lot of time with the animals and they do feel sad about the wool being thrown away as well so um, not speaking for everyone of course but um, at least some of the people I, to I talked to and so I just really had the urge of doing something about this um, but making local yarn and especially finding mills that are able to process your yarn is a challenge just because the whole mill business does seem to have died quite a bit in the last couple of decades so there are not a lot of mills left in Europe unfortunately and then those mills for me at least they had to tick all the boxes um, of sustainability and the process needed to be um, yeah as I imagined it to be so it wasn't easy um, and I spent months and months of doing research on how to process wool and what I had to do before um, sending it off to a mill and I had so many calls and emails with different mill owners and I learned so much during that period and I'm still continuing to do so because every batch of wool is different because it's an animal product and yeah I'm still so surprised about some things even though I've learned so much by now and um, have gotten quite have gathered quite some knowledge about fiber and the spinning process but I still learn so much every time I make another limited batch and it's so exciting um, but yeah it took me a lot of time to research for mills to research for shepherds and shepherdesses and find ways to produce my own yarns um, not even uh, considering the financial um, part of it because um, even if you go to a very small mill there are a lot of like the, the less you produce the higher the spinning costs are and some mills even only take um, batches from 100 kilograms of raw wool plus and then others start maybe at 15 or 20 kilograms but still if you um, have to also pay um, properly for the raw wool which is another topic that I'm going to cover in a second but if you're paying for the raw wool um, sorting it putting it into the mill and then having the whole batch back at once and you have to pay that bill at once and you're really just starting out with your business being very small like I did it's a splurge and um, it's something to keep in mind um, and that like I had to work towards that point where I was able to say I can um, financially afford um, spinning my own yarns so that's also something to consider and um, speaking of the price of raw wool um, that's definitely something that's very dear to my heart like being fair about the prices because as I mentioned it's dumping prices for raw wool um, on the industry kind of scale and I really did want to change that with my like as far as I can with my little uh, productions and I decided to pay the shepherds um, 
a good amount of money per kilogram because I mean they are raising the sheep they are shearing the sheep and it's a lot of work that goes into the raw wool as well and I didn't want to like join the queue of people who pay dumping prices um, most of the time the shepherds and shepherdesses are not even able to um, fund the cost for the shearing out of the very little money they get paid and so that's definitely I mean it's such a big issue and I wanted to change that and so yeah I'm um, paying quite a bit more than the industrial uh, standard to the shepherds because it's important to me that not only the animals um, are treated in the best way possible which is also a topic I want to cover in this video but I also want the people involved in the process to have kind of a fair payment um, and not being dumped and yeah so animal welfare that's another topic um, that was important to me with the whole production process and with every batch I make I usually go to the shepherd first to see everything around it and I I let them tell their stories to me and their values and I only work with people where I know that the animals are treated in the best way possible. Um, that is something that's very dear to my heart because I would not, I'm myself, I'm a vegetarian, I don't eat meat and I try to eat as little animal products as possible um, and I I don't want to support anyone who's not treating their animals right um, even though they're getting like a precious product from them like wool is and yeah so it was my decision to only work with people who where I know that everything is going well and I um, I always go there and look at the farms and um, look at the circumstances of everything and I would only get wool from people where I know that the circumstances are up to my standards. Um, I don't want to be talking too much about the whole like ecological part and like bio um, certifications and stuff because the whole certification process is a thing that's questionable partly and all, most of the time has to do a lot with not only of course like for example for animals with food and the space they have and the treatments they are getting but it also has to do with a lot of money that you have to spend on a certification so I've been to um, farms where I know that people are treating their animals as perfectly as they can they are getting the best ecologically um, and ethical food and they are getting the best um, treatment they can get um, but that um, shepherd might not be able to afford a certification um, like a bio or bio or ecological certification and um, so yeah it's nice I think it's very wonderful to know that there are a lot of organic farms and things around but that's not necessarily like the certification is not necessarily what does it for me I do like to go um, and see the circumstances myself and get told everything and yeah I don't necessarily only look for a certification and just take it for granted and be like okay that's that's certified organic um, I can definitely trust those people and uh, be sure that they are treating the animals perfectly right because it's not necessarily the case so not go wanting to go too much into the whole uh, organic, not organic, um, animal industry um, kind of issue. But yeah, just know that whenever you're purchasing a limited edition yarn from me, that I've, I've been there, I've seen the sheep, I've seen the shepherds, I know the circumstances of these animals and also to take care of a fair price for the wool. So that's what I wanted to um, stress about because I don't know if it's something that people actually consider that local wool is not local wool and it doesn't mean that all local wool is perfectly great and um, yeah for me there is a little bit more behind that word speaking of 
localness uh, of the wool. It's actually, um, I try to source everything within one driving hour from where I live, which is a challenge because there are not, un not unlimited shepherds and shepherdesses out there. But um, I'm constantly broadening my network and there are always new people coming up and talking to me and they know someone else who might have another interesting breed of sheep and, and somehow this whole network is um, getting bigger and bigger and I really enjoy that and yeah so I um, try to have it all very local. Also because I don't only go there to see the place and make sure that the animals are treated properly but I also mostly go there to pick up the wool myself. Um, I've recently started producing larger amounts of um, like larger batches and those will be have to be transported with a freight forwarder um, but with the really small batches that are coming from also like hobby shepherds or so I actually go there and I pick the wool up myself um, with the help of my boyfriend luckily <laughs> um, but yeah I go there pick it up and then the wool gets sorted. That's the next step in the whole production process that actually, apart from the research and the whole um, uh, communication with shepherds and mills, this takes up the most time in the whole process because um, most of the time I get the wool directly as it is from the sheep. And there are shearers who take care more of like, some parts of the wool and some don't and depending on how well they took care of the quality of the fleeces they are getting of the sheep um, you have to sort the wool and pick out pieces that are not suitable for spinning um, that was definitely the biggest learning curve i had um, learning about how to um, sort wool and what can stay in there, what has to be taken out. I mean, it's pretty clear that you won't leave like poop and stuff in the wool and hay and stuff. But also with like um, second cuts that happen do during the shearing and everything, um, I really had to learn on what I can leave in and how much I have to sort out because of course I also don't want to waste a lot of, um, of the wool, but yeah, I have to sort everything. And some pieces are just not suitable for spinning and those pieces have to, to be taken out of the raw wool and of the fleeces. So, um, speaking of waste, I don't want to waste anything of the um, wool and even the parts that I pick out are still used and um, we are e either mulking, mulking? putting it onto plants to keep snails away and uh, lock moisture into the, um, into the soil in the garden in our veggie patch or we compost it. So it's definitely not going to waste um, and it's going to be used to grow vegetables which is pretty nice. Um, but then the rest of the clean wool um, gets packed up and um, brought to the mill um, I work with several mills and all of them are very small and family operated um, so yeah they are all not not like big industry mills but like very small ones that some of them even have been in the industry for ma many generations which I find pretty cool um, but yeah the yarn gets uh, shipped to the mill um, that I of course before I work with them, always visit. Like I've visited every mill I work with um, just to see um, how the facilities are, how the processes are, because I, I wouldn't want to do all the effort for the wool to be um, responsibly sourced and then have someone throw like loads of chemicals and bleaching my wool or something in there. So I always make sure that these um, mills align with my values and that they are able to process the wool as minimally as possible just so there are no unnecessary additives or chemicals or anything involved in the process and I'm pretty proud of being able to work with those mills that I'm working with um, just because they all tick the boxes for me and that is 
just very lovely and it took me years to find them so I'm very lucky to have those um, mills that are just working in the way that I like them to work and that are treating the wool with respect and only processing it minimally none of those mills is able to process a super wash treatment or something like that so it's all very natural partly with very old machines and um, like as close to the most minimal um, processing as possible um, so yeah the mill then has to be informed about what yarn weight I want or what is important to me in the uh, processing process so yeah it's always like a back and forth with the mills about a yarn because they have way more experience with all kinds of different fibers than I do and so it's always interesting to hear their thoughts on what a yarn might be suitable for for example depending on a staple length of the fiber um, to be turned into a more of a fingering weight yarn or more of, if they're a bit of a coarser and some um, yeah, shorter hairs in it then it might be more suitable for a DK weight or anything so that's always the uh, the process where I still learn the most about it and I really enjoy um, the exchange with the mills and their expertise which is something I'm very grateful for um, so yeah then the chatting begins about what to do with the wool and what it might be suitable for and also sometimes I'm discussing blends with the mills before and then I send them like from two different sheep breeds I send them something um, yeah or we are discussing about uh, colors because yeah I do like non-white yarns and um, it's always nice to blend different breeds to achieve a certain color um, and then is the waiting once we decided on what the yarn will be like or what we think would be suitable um, the mill notes it down and puts it into line for production which can by now because they are all very busy and there are only very few mills left as I mentioned it can take up to a year until a batch of yarn is actually processed which yeah sometimes is a challenge because um, by the time I don't even have the, the one batch back I already have another batch of wool from another shepherd and I'm always like constantly it's a constant work of juggling long p processing periods which yeah sometimes is a bit like I even had it once that two of my limited edition batches came at once so I had to pay the full spinning at once for two batches but I didn't want to drop them like two limited editions in one shop update or something so I yeah sometimes it's a challenge to uh, get all this working um, also because sometimes it's a bit quicker with the mills because they m maybe are able to move like one batch and um, I don't know find a little space between two bigger batches to make a smaller one or whatever so you never really know when it's gonna be finished but once it's finished um, it's always the best feeling because I it takes so many months that it's not the production of that um, limited edition is not necessarily on top of my head anymore and then usually there comes an email or a call from the mill and then they're like oh your yarn is ready um, would you like me to ship it to you and everything and then it's always like hmm that's the best feeling because yeah it's, it's like you forgot about something a bit super exciting and you get reminded about it again and yeah then I'm always very nervous waiting for the wool to arrive and to feel it for the first time because even though I've learned so much about fibers and everything still every batch surprises me and yeah it's just the loveliest moment when you open that box and the yarn is there and you feel it for the first time and you sniff it for the first time which I know some of you might do as well <laughs> um, and it's just so so magical to see what all this work turned into um, and then I usually try and find the whole story to the yarn and share it with all of you before selling it just because I feel it's so precious that I 
have been involved in every step of the process from the sheep to the skein of yarn and that's always so amazing and yeah I just sit there with the yarn then usually and look at it and then the, usually the inspiration sparks for a project that I want to knit out of it because I'm trying to always knit a sample out of every limited edition yarn just so you can really have an idea of what it looks like and how it knits up and um, that's always the really exciting part to just cake up a skein and knit the first swatch and see how it behaves, see how it blocks and see what the drape is like and whether it's a bit more soft or a bit more stiff or what the color is like looking like and it's just so amazing because there can be so many aspects to a yarn that make it a certain way and even though you anticipate something to turn out a certain way it doesn't always necessarily so even though you're like okay I want this to be very woolly and fluffy it might not be possible or you want something to be twisted a little bit more and yeah it's just always really exciting to see how it knits up for the first time and yeah it then goes the way that you already know I introduced it to you and I put it into the shop and then it's usually gone quite quickly <laughs> but that's also why I'm trying to produce larger batches now so it's not always just gone after one shop update so I could maybe have a little bit more of those limited editions but yeah it's just very precious to have the chance to do these and I can only now produce um, these larger batches because of you and because of your support and I'm very thankful for that and yeah I'm hoping to improve and that things are not as limited as they are now um, but yeah I'm pretty sure I forgot something about the process I'm very sure <laughs> but um, if there is something that's particularly interesting for you um, feel free to let me know um, there are a couple of questions that I might not answer um, not because I want to keep anything like not share with you but I have researched quite a few things for years and it has been a lot of work and I'm happy to share about my work but there are a couple of details where I'm like I don't want to share this because it's my work of researching it and I don't want to give someone a manual to something that I have been working on for years to find it out how it works. So, I don't know, if you ask me something that's a little bit too detailed and that I feel like goes a bit too much into my researching history and that's for, for me too precious to share for free, then please have understanding for that because, yeah, it's so much work and I know it's not always visible behind the scenes, what I'm doing and apart from dying, this whole thing of producing those limited editions, even though they're only coming up every couple of months, it takes up time every day and I'm working on this every day because there's either a, an email from a mill, I have several batches in the works at several mills and there's either an email from a mill or a new inquiry from a shepherd or a shepherdess uh, or I don't know anything like that so it's a lot of work in the in the background that's going into those limited editions and yeah I hope that you have kind of a little bit more of a feeling of how special they are and um, yeah I just wanted to share with you some parts of the process just because I feel it's important for you to know um, that it's not just a quick project that I'm dropping every few months but it's yeah, I, it's, I love this work and it's my kind of a baby um, next to like the core of my work that's the natural dyeing part. These limited editions are my little babies that I release into the world and even though they are a lot of hard work and even physical work because lifting kilograms. I don't know why this just stopped but I wanted to say that lifting um, heavy bags of sheep's wool that's usually full of lanolin and fat and yeah lanolin is the fat of the sheep and dirt and stuff is really heavy <laughs> and so yeah and standing there for 
I don't know, several days for eight hours sorting wool. It's a physical thing as well as a, um, yeah, organizational work and I just hope that this video kind of gave you a bit of a glimpse into the process and yeah, I'm happy to share more about this. If there are a couple of questions occurring, I might do a Q&A at some point. Um, but yeah, so far, this is what I wanted to share with you. And yeah, as said, we're going to have a new limited edition in the January update. And I'm particularly excited about this one. And I'm going to share about this um, very soon. Very, very soon. So... Yeah, that is it for my little uh, wool production special and yeah, if you're only here for the info part then uh, you can zone off but I've also wanted to chat to you about my holiday knitting plans a little bit um, because this is kind of a special episode for the Christmas season so I thought why not include a little chat about that and um, yeah. Maybe we can have a little discussion or chat in the comments about what your holiday knitting plans are. Um, I would love to know. Um, also because I didn't have a lot of time to browse Ravelry or to find a whole lot of patterns lately. Or if I found them, I kind of lost them again. So I wasn't really good at keeping track of patterns I liked. And so I'm always open for recommendations. So... With my holiday knitting plans, I'm definitely planning a few new cast-ons because I um, had a few um, bind-offs recently and I, I shared those ethos in the latest podcast episode. But I would like to have more um, new cast-ons that I can really, yeah, dedicate my knitting time in the holidays on. Two. I think it's two. <laughs> um... So one thing I definitely want to cast on is a sampo in the new limited edition yarn. And that one, what I can share already, is a fingering woolen spun yarn. And I'm thinking of maybe making a sweater out of it. Um, I'm unfortunately not the most colorful person, so I'm not sure whether a color work would be the right thing for me to make. Although I think the yarn would be very suitable for that. Um, but I'm thinking of a pretty simple sweater that might show off the texture of the yarn well. Um, and since it's a fingering, I was even thinking if I could pair it with another strand of something. Um, but yeah, let me know if you prefer me to knit the samples out of the wool as it is, or if you would like it to also see it combined with, let's say, an ethically produced mohair or anything. Um, because I could really imagine a very classic sweater with that yarn with a little bit of a mohair because it has a nice luster and I feel like it could be nice. So yeah, a simple nicely fitted uh, sweater pattern would be very well um, received if you have any recommendations. And then what I definitely also want to cast on is another project in Nutilin yarn because <laughs> I might have gone a bit crazy in the last couple of months and bought a lot of skeins and beautiful beigey tones. Well, not skeins, it's plates more. But yeah, I want to knit myself a natural beigey cardigan out of um, Nittiden. And I'm thinking to maybe copy the idea of um, Eva of Blue Rabbit House and um, Natalie of the Lille Store Leave It. Don't quote me on that, but I will link her below. Um, of knitting an, a good cigar cardigan out of uh, Nettiden. Um, that pattern is by Hygestrik or Lone Kjelsen, I think she's called. And that one is just a very oversizey, well, not oversizey necessarily, but very loosely fitted um, sweater. And I think it would be very nice to make an oversized version in the Tiden because of the lightness of that yarn. So I am really inspired to do that. And I've maybe even already swatched and I'm very happy with the color combo. So I'm gonna show that to you next time. Um, so yeah, that's definitely another plan. And then I would like to 
also knit a pair of socks because as I mentioned in the last podcast episode I totally um, have way too little sock pairs for this year so I'm planning on making another pair maybe for myself because those knit up way quicker than the ones for my partner I'm wearing a 36 um, European size foot no not foot but shoe and so it's very quick for me to knit another pair of socks for me. So maybe with the beautiful hearth sock by Emma, that would be very nice. Um, so let's see. But uh, yeah, those are my knitting plans so far for the holidays. Um, I might add on to them because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have all kinds of ideas all of the time, but um, yeah. So far these are my plans for new cast-ons and I hope I will be having a little bit more knitting time in the January as well. Um, but let's see how it will all turn out. But you will definitely see a couple of Instagram stories from me knitting over the holidays. Be sure of that. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone of you wants to join me on a little uh, holiday knitting, let me know. Um, I'm excited to hear about your projects. Um, Please comment them down below. I would love to know about them and get to know more patterns and designers. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to hear what you're making. Have a lovely holiday. Enjoy the little chatty episode. Um, let me know if you would want me to chat more in depth about these kind of things um, and maybe about other parts of my work. I never know of how much interest it actually is or if you just want to see the end product or if you want to know about this. Um, these backgrounds but yeah feel free to let me know I'm looking forward to chat to you again soon and I hope to be able to record more podcast episodes um, more frequently in the future so yeah you're gonna see my face a bit, bit more often probably so have a lovely hobbit holiday enjoy your time off hopefully um, yeah and with your loved ones so 